Hana is a beast that only gets better as you give her skills, sort of like Cordelia. Greetings and salutations, my name is Deltran doing builds for Tana the Winged Princess. You and I are going to go over her matchups, some good build options for her, but first let's get her digits. So we're looking for 42, 35, and 32, and we hit one of them on speed, 36, that is a nice speed. Attack is 34, that's not bad, and she does have a legendary weapon, spoilers, so we're going to hit 50 attack on that. Defense and resistance of 25, that's nice on a flying unit, and hit points of 36, well, uh, we'll see where that stands in a moment. It's not the lowest in the uh, entire game, but, you know, it's not great. Uh, of course, the best boons are attack and speed. The best bane is resistance because math. And let's go ahead and compare her to her contemporaries. So we could see here in the hit point line that uh, we're all the way at the bottom. Boom! But we share that with uh, a good friend, so you know, that happens. In attack, we're one point short of being at the very tippy top next to Cordelia and Hanoka. So that's why we're there, and of course, uh, Subaki's at the very bottom. Speed-wise, we share the top with uh, Claire, and we're one point ahead of Cordelia here. So that's pretty much where she is in comparison to Cordelia because defense wise we're right in the middle re for both of the uh, defense and resistance other people are ahead of us other people are below us it almost doesn't matter for uh, the most part but her defense of 25 can definitely come into play once we look at what she swings with so we see here that we have our legendary weapon of Vidolfnir and that's going to give us a gives us a bonus to our defenses whenever we're fighting swords, axes and lances, which is really nice. Moonbow is also a very good special. That's going to help us out quite a lot in dealing some extra damage. She's actually quite a beast in combat. It is so much fun. Um but let's take a look at the rest of her passives. Speed defense 2 grants plus 2 speed and defense that works out really well for her because speed and defense are both really good stats that you probably want to bolster on her. Guidance 3 however, whoo, this is fun. This is teleportation for armor and infantry who are within 2 of her. It's a skill that is only inheritable on flyers, you can't put it on a horse or on someone else to be able to do the same trick, but whenever the, an infantry or an armor unit's 2 away from T uh, Tana in this case, you're going to be able to move somewhere and they're going to be able to teleport adjacent to her. So this is wonderful, there's a lot of great synergies that you can get here. So let's go ahead and talk tactics a little bit. Tana is meant to take a hit, and for the most part, what you, uh, what I recommend doing with her is running around, go ahead and smack somebody that preferably you can one-hit kill, bring down your Moonbow counter by one, and then whenever someone else runs up to you, make sure you could take the hit, keep all your hit points there, and smack them back with Moonbow and with all that other damage, and you can bring other friends along with you uh, to be able to uh, shore up some things. Uh, someone can just jump right behind you with uh, a tome or a bow and do things up over your head. You can always bring an armor unit right in front of you to be able to march forward a step and continue on their merry way. There's a lot of great flexibility there. It's not necessarily the skill that's going to be the most abusive, so to speak. But when it comes down to it, if you're on maps that have bridges and walls, this is going to be a great skill to have because it's going to relocate people for you into a much more advantageous place. And I think that we're going to see several uh, cute tricks with this later on in different Grand Hero battles, especially whenever there's different walls and other things going on. You could easily zip a flyer over that way, have an armored unit just sort of dump dee dump dee dump dee dump dee dump, dump up uh, along some place. And after they're done blocking somebody, you can w bring them back over to the other side of the wall and then continue the killage. So I think that Tana is great. And honestly, she has a lot of potential for killing things. Let's go ahead and check out the obituaries. 82, 6, and 76. This is great. 39, 13, and 112 whenever she's defending. There's a lot of nice faces here. I don't have tons showing for you, but when it comes down to it, uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it's, I, I love, I, I really love what I'm seeing here. There's a, a, not really that many archers. I have one listed there for you, and that's pretty much 
it. There's a couple other ones that you would look at in PvE, but no one else in PvP is going to show up on this list. Otherwise, there's a lot of great potential here. She's going through a lot of the thicker red uh, heroes. She's going through a lot of the tougher blue heroes. So you have a lot to work with here. She's going to go ahead and run up and one hit something and then run away and be able to take the hit while she retreats and let somebody just teleport right in to be able to reposition them or do some other shenanigans with them. On the flip side, whenever we're looking at who actually kills us, the top row once again is who we die to whenever we initiate on them. Hmm, Hector. I didn't see that one coming. And the uh, rest of the guys there whenever you are defending and you get attacked. All archers! Surprise! You need to do some quick, cheap, and easy upgrades to a reposition is a fantastic skill. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's really cool. You should go ahead and look it up. <laughs> uh, if you're looking to fill in that empty B slot, Swordbreaker is going to give her the most bang for the buck. It's going to make sure that she can compete against all those really fast sword lords that are out there. And it's going to uh, give her uh, about 12 more wins. Eh, 15 more wins than what she used to have. Hit and run, however, is also another great one. Synergizes well with guidance. She can run out there, smack somebody, and if they're not around, or even if it doesn't matter if they're around or not, you can you step one uh, place back and then you can have someone who is in the back rank teleport to right in front of you to either take care of what you just finished or tried to finish off or to just do whatever that unit does. Renewal 3 is a decent one if you're going to use her a little bit defensively. She will stick around a lot longer, and this is more useful for a lot of PvE con content. You're not going to really see this in Arena. You're either going to have her fine or you're going to have her not fine. It's very bully in there. If you're looking for some replacements, I put Blazing Light here. She's a really good AoE user, so I think that you uh, should probably consider something like this, and it'll help patch up that quote-unquote low... Uh, BST that she has for Arena if you go with uh, such a high charge special. Darting Blow 3 is going to give her quite a lot more kills. Makes her very intimidating on the battlefield. It's an easy upgrade to do. I highly recommend doing it, especially if you're not going to really rely on her getting hit. Fury 3 is good if you're going to put her on a defensive team. Not a big surprise there. And if you're not going to be putting her on a infantry or armor team, yeah, you want Goat Flyers. That's exactly what you should be doing. Let's take a look at some complete overhauls of her. Brave Lance does really well. If you give her Luna now that she'll be able to stick around and have uh, several hits go on in a row, especially with the fact that even with Brave Lance, she's going to double a lot of people. Well, quad a lot of people. You might as well give her death blow at this point in time. You're not expecting her to take a hit anymore, and you took her legendary weapon off of her, so she's not going to have a massive defense. Give her that, goad flyers, put her into a flying team. You're welcome. You can also go the route with Fire Sweep Lance. Uh, pretty much the exact same build here. With Fire Sweep Lance, it's really nice to keep guidance on her because there are some targets that she's not going to be able to kill, and it seems like it, there's a lot more in some of the higher level PvE content just because of the way things land. So you, you're going to need to have that ability to do the hit and run, move back, have an infantry or somebody else come up and save her. Otherwise, the fact that she gets that one hit in is going to be a blessing to you in so many different maps and in so many different situations. Just make sure that she does have that backup that she needs in this particular case. We're only two kill short, but everybody else is in the draw because they're not getting to us. But you, when it comes down to it, there's a lot that could go wrong. If you're not careful with her, Fire Sweep Lance is not really so much a gigantic bludgeoning hammer, but it's much more like a quick finesse type weapon. You have to have the correct support there. So if you don't want to have support waiting in the wing for your Tana, who is still going to kill lots of people, don't get me wrong. But if you're not going to support her, you definitely need to uh, probably consider something else. But if you don't mind have, having someone else there to trudge along and to take advantage of guidance, this is going to be so much fun. Well, I showed you two different builds that are perfect on Cordelia, so let me go ahead and show you something that makes her a little bit more like Subaki. We keep her uh, legendary we weapon, Vidolfnir. 
reposition, of course, a shooting, and then we give her close defense three. Yeah, she could probably put in fortress defense if you want to. Fortress resistance, I would not recommend it. Just the sa same was with uh, distant uh, defense. Not something that I recommend on her, but you know what? All these are going to buff up her defenses, and it'll let her take a huge hit, as, uh, at least from the correct targets. Quick repose three, make sure that everybody suffers for it. Goat Flyers, this seems like something you put on a Goat Flyers team. She doesn't have as good of a defense when it comes down to it as Subaki does, but with this it's really darn close and she has a heck of a lot more kills and isn't immediately crippled by green, so that's a benefit. Do me a favor, if I've given you something to chew on, hit that like button. If you like your information hot and fresh, hit that subscribe button. My name is Deltran, thank you guys so much, I greatly appreciate all of you and until next time, take it easy.